Here we're going to find the exact values for our six trigonometric ratios. Above, we have the trigonometric ratios that we're going to use. So let P, negative 2, 4, be a point on the terminal side of theta, an angle in standard position. Find the exact values for sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of theta. Now theta is just an arbitrary angle that we're going to use. And so the first thing I need to do is plot negative 2, 4. Since x is negative and y is positive, that tells me I'm in the second quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my reference triangle in the second quadrant. So that's my terminal side. And now I've created my reference triangle. Well, x is negative 2. And y is 4. And theta is always located between the x-axis and the terminal side here at the origin. Now, I need to find the hypotenuse because each of these trigonometric ratio, as far as sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant, involve the hypotenuse. So in order to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So when I plug it in, I'm going to have 4 squared plus negative 2 squared equals c squared. When I solve this, I get that 20 equals c squared. I'm going to square root 20, and then I'm going to reduce it to 2 square root of 5 equals c. And this is my hypotenuse. Now that I have all the lengths, I can go ahead and find sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine theta is opposite of the hypotenuse. Opposite of theta is 4. The hypotenuse is 2 square root of 5. I then reduce that to 2 over square root of 5. And then I rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of 5. And I get 2 square root of 5 over 5. So sine theta equals 2 square root of 5 over 5. I now find cosine theta. Cosine theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent is negative 2. The hypotenuse is 2 square root of 5, which gives me, if I reduce it, negative 1 over the square root of 5. And then rationalize using the same process as I did above, and I get negative square root of 5 over 5. This is cosine theta. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 4, adjacent is negative 2. So 4 over negative 2, which reduces to negative 2. Now to find the other 3, it's easy, since these 3 are the reciprocal of the previous. So if I start with cosecant theta, okay, cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. And what I can use is this term here before I rationalize it, 2 over the square root of 5. And the reciprocal is going to be the square root of 5 over 2. So cosecant theta is square root of 5 over 2. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. Again, I'm going to go ahead and use the term before I rationalized it, and I get negative square root of 5 over 1, which is just the negative square root of 5. And cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tan theta. Well, tan theta is negative 2, so the reciprocal of negative 2 is negative 1 half. And so these would be our exact values for our six trigonometric functions. Now notice that when we're drawing our reference triangle, that the adjacent side is x, and the opposite side is y. And that's going to help when we do the next one. Here, we're given that sine theta equals negative 3 over 4, and cosine theta is greater than 0. And we want to find the other five trigonometric ratios. Well, since cosine theta is greater than 0, and cosine theta uses the adjacent, that means we're looking at the x value. So cosine theta is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. 
sine theta is negative 3 over 4. And since it's opposite over the hypotenuse, that means that 3 is our y-coordinate. Now the hypotenuse is never negative, so the negative sign goes on to 3. So that means my y value is negative. So now I know that I'm in quadrant 4. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw my reference triangle in quadrant 4. And label everything that I do know. Okay? I know that y is negative 3. 4 is my hypotenuse, which means what I have to find is the x value, and I do that by using Pythagorean theorem. So I have negative 3 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared. That's going to give me 9 plus b squared equals 16. b squared equals 7, and therefore b equals the square root of 7. And since cosine is positive, then I'm using the positive square root of 7. Now that I have all my missing sides, and theta, again, is between the x-axis and the terminal side, I can find the other 5. Well, I can go ahead and write sine theta, since I already have that, because that, what that allows me to do is to find cosecant theta. Again, cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta, so this becomes negative 4 thirds. Now I can look for cosine theta. Cosine theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is square root of 7, and the hypotenuse is 4. Well, I can find secant theta now, because secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. And that's 4 over the square root of 7. And when I rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of 7, I get 4 square root of 7 over 7. Now I can find tan theta. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is negative 3. Adjacent is square root of 7. I then rationalize it, and I get negative 3 square root of 7 over 7. Cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tan theta. So again, I look at it prior to rationalizing, and I find that it's negative square root of 7 over 3. And this is how we find our six trigonometric ratios.